Hello, everybody. Somebody tell me if you can hear me okay in the chat stream. It's having a little trouble going live just now. Awesome. Thank you, Daniel O'Connor. Um, Sarah Satya and Kobe Thorpe will be moderating the chat. Anyone act silly. Um, they will also be answering kind of general questions. If it's something I've already addressed, then either one of them, if you see that they posted something, then that's as good as my word. So, um, hello <laughs> from, uh, uh, Kehi, Kehi Marine Center. I always say it, Kihei. So I have to tell myself, oh, Kehi. That's how I try to remember to say it right, because I always say it wrong. Kehi Marine Center in Honolulu. Um, and uh, yeah, this is the last evening here. We're supposed to splash in the morning. Very, very excited. There is, uh, after we get going here in a second, I'm going to carry the laptop down and show you guys everything down there and um hopefully not fall down the 12 foot ladder <laughs> with the laptop but um yeah there is someone playing hip and or hop music out there which i have no control over so um just know that uh other than that things have been going very very well and everything's done now it's just like splash time which is exciting, crazy. Um, let me see. Uh, oh, I'll show you guys. I brought these up. We'll show and tell. These are the rods that broke at sea. So that's what was inside my wooden rudder that failed. And um, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen a lot of stuff in real time that's happening. I did discover a giant, like, I don't know, a six to eight inch chip strike point on the bottom of the hole on the port side. So that whatever I hit, if it was a container or something else, that was obviously its first strike point, which deflected it, which explains why the rudder didn't fail on the initial strike. And it just, it had a glancing blow on that top corner where it chipped it and fractured those rods that eventually kind of worked their way loose until they snapped all the way when I was steering. So, um, that was kind of wild to, um, see that I'd never, I hadn't seen that all the times I dove on it until it hauled out and it was on the travel lift. I saw it clear as day at the bottom and it's on the, the video that's coming up of the haul out. So you'll see footage of that, but, um, that was pretty telling and kind of scary um and a lot of people were like how was it how did it not strike the hole how did it not strike the hole and i'm like well apparently it did strike the hole but i was lucky that it was like very low and i'm also lucky that my boat is built like a sherman tank so that's awesome um hello everybody it's chiming in on the chat from all over the world australia canada kate's in connecticut um, got my, some of my California people here. Dave is in, uh, New Zealand. Thanks everybody for joining me. Um, another Australia looking forward to getting over y'all's way and hitting New Zealand and Australia. It's going to be awesome. I just know that the trades are howling right now, so it might be noisy. And also I'm not going to be able to like really pay attention to the chat when I'm walking around. Um, oh, my boy, Mike. Here, What's up, Mike? Um, as my mama used to say, the, the trades are showing their butt. Now, I'm not sure what that means. As an adult, she always said, you're showing your butt if we are getting out of line. Maybe she just wanted to tell us we were being assholes, but she was trying to not call her, her son's assholes outright when we were small. So the trades are showing their butt. And uh, they are howling. So um, it's going to be very noisy. Mike said it's blowing 37 off Waikiki today. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's that. Um, 
What else? What else? Let me think. I guess we can just go down and walk around. Um, we got 57, 58 people on board. Maybe we'll wait a little bit till we get some more, more people show up and we'll go down below. Hello, Kimberly. Kimberly is saying what's up from Mozambique. Um, so, uh, maybe this is the time to talk about what I did and why I did what I did. So I repaired my original rudder, which is wood. Um, and the reason that is, is because I dove on the boat. I don't remember back when I did it, but I dove on the boat at the beginning, the end of last year, or beginning of the year and pulled the rudder in the water, pulled the shoe, the rudder shoe, the rudder completely off the boat, got it topside and tried to get the shaft out. And I discovered, because my idea then was like, if I can get the shaft out, I can have a new rudder built around the shaft or have a new shaft made, whatever, and then reinstall it in the water and save this whole business. But what I discovered was there was, it was impossible to get the tiller shaft out of the boat without pulling the engine and pulling the prop shaft into the boat. Now, I couldn't do that safely in the water because I could have sunk. Um, because if the, if the prop shaft got too far into the PSS, because I'd had to pull the prop off, bring the prop shaft in, and then the boat could flood. So it was too risky to do it that way. Um, so once I realized that, I was like, okay, the only option now is to do a repair on with the the tiller shaft in um and a lot of people are like you know asking me why in the world wouldn't i just replace the rudder it, it all comes down to two things um time and money that's the keys and it's very expensive to be on the hard in hawaii now in southern california it would have been no problem i could have thrown it on a trailer i could have put it in a lot whatever and I have so many resources and everything is so much cheaper in Southern California. In Hawaii, it is absurdly expensive. So the amount of time it would have to be, you know, out of the water with all that chaos to have someone rebuild it. And then the material cost of like getting a stainless shaft, a tiller shaft made here. And then everything would have just been completely absurd and, and totally out. It's out of the realm of possibility for me and my budget. So I was like, okay, I'll do a repair on the rudder that I trust and I believe in. And then when I get, I should be in Thailand by the, the end of next year or the beginning of the following year. And I plan on doing some big projects there. And one of the things is I will have a new tiller. I mean, I'll have a new rudder made and a stainless steel tiller shaft and everything replaced and made new in Thailand when I'm there. Cause it's, it's far more affordable. Um, so that's what it came down to. And the other thing is like, you know, having the boat out of the water and having it, you know, having it not being able to afford to ha keep it on the hard. It's also my home. So I live here and it's also my livelihood. So, I'm, you know, as you guys know, like I make videos for a living related to my boat. So there were that those were the main factors as to why I was like, OK, well, I'm just going to do this repair. So the repair I did was I had these very large bronze tanks uh, that I fabricated. I ordered big pieces of bronze. I drilled holes um, in them. And then I had them welded to the tiller shaft. And then I threw bolted them to the rudder. And I also replaced all of these broken rods that I showed you guys a minute ago with bronze all thread. So now the tiller, now the rudder has its like original strength which I think I could have repaired it just with the all thread. And now all thread is not nearly as strong as like, you know, this is, this is just material that doesn't have a thread. So when you have the thread, you've removed material. So this is actually stronger, but either way, I think I could have just repaired it just with all thread, but I don't think I would have ever trusted it. So I'd already spent the money on the bronze tangs and everything. I was like, I'm just going to do this thing. Double, double up. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. Um, so, uh, someone just said original rudder rods were steel. No, they're bronze. Um, 
So, um, this music, just a second. People listen to terrible music here. Um, so, so that's what I did. Uh, I had these, I removed material from the rudder so that the bronze tangs would sit flush against the tiller shaft. And again, all this is coming in an episode. And then um, a welder named Brian from Shaka Engineering, the only person that works for that company that knows how to weld bronze. He spent six hours welding these like two six inch sections of the rudder. Um, he was very patient and a very good welder and um, just like got the job done. And it was super tough. And again, as I said, I've posted photos on my Instagram account. If you want to pop over and see that, um, a sneak peek before the episode comes out. Uh, it is super hardcore weld. Very excited about it. And um, so that's where we're at with that. <clears throat> uh, it's all done. Um, and then once everything is done, I had the bronze bolts installed. And instead of Loctite, I epoxied. I put wet epoxy on it. And um, so I Loctite everything with epoxy because I'm not worried about ever taking them off again. I'll, I'll just cut them off. If for some reason I ever needed to take them off, I'll just cut them. Uh, and then I like coated it with the uh, spray, like the, there's like a bottom paint that you use on bronze for propellers. And I did that as the base two two base coats with that. And then I painted it with the rest of the regular bottom paint. Um, another, I want to give a shout out to my buddy, Mike, who's on here. Captain Mike, you know him from the passage video. He had an extra gallon of bottom paint from a job that he donated to Tritea. So I was able to throw uh, another coat of bottom paint on her while she was out, which is awesome. Um, my bottom paint actually still looked really good. Like, so I was happy. Um, but the, you know, while it's out and paid to have it out, then that's, that's great. Um, let me see. Uh, you guys, let me see what's happening in the chat over here. And I'll, I'll answer a bunch of questions and stuff once we're done um, towards the end there. And um, what else? Um, let's talk about the cost. I got the numbers over here somewhere. <clears throat> so going into this, I thought that I thought it was going to cost me my ball dollars for the haul out for everything uh and so far i have like 681 for what i've already paid for the haul out and the lay days so far i'm sure they'll squeak some more money out of me when i go to the office to settle up tomorrow morning um the welding came to 811 dollars which i was afraid it was gonna be like 1200 dollars. so i was i was it was like the happiest $800 bill I ever seen saw. Uh, I spent $600 on the bronze and on the bronze, like uh, all thread and stuff and having it shipped here from Los Angeles because you couldn't get it on Island. And then uh, a couple hundred dollars on miscellaneous stuff at West Marine. I'm sure I spent more that I, I'm not figuring right now, but the total right now is $2,300. Um, so it's pretty close to what I was guessing. It's it's under, which is usually you guess and it's over. But I had done such an extensive refit on everything when I hauled out last time that uh, I didn't expect any surprises other than what I knew to was happening with the rudder. And I didn't find any. Um, what else did I do while I was out? I pulled the shoe rudder shoe back off because I had pulled it off in the water. And... Um, I had noticed it was had tons of like sealant between it and the hole. So I was like, oh, bummer. You can't really do that in the water. Not, not that I know of. And so I went ahead and put Cicaflex on that and got that reinstalled the proper way. And uh, then this afternoon, I actually, I've been installing my hydro vane. And <clears throat> I wasn't happy with the way the wooden, uh, the timber pad was, uh, I had formed it to my transom, but I wasn't happy with how. It was seating, so I went ahead and bedded that out. So there's an epoxy bed that the timber pad sits on now, so it's going to be perfect, like all contact. So 
I knocked that out this afternoon. Pretty stoked about that. Um, yeah. You guys have any questions so far before I carry you downstairs? Any questions? Nope. No questions. Um, trying to think what else. So I guess, yeah, tomorrow I'll leave here and I'm going to try to stay at this marina that's close by just for a couple days, like three or four days. And, um, <clears throat> I will be, um, just kind of get my ducks in a row, get the hydro vane completely installed. Um, and then I will be heading to Lanai, Molokai, weeks, filming, doing sea trials, pulling a new gear on the boat that I have to like work everything out. I have new sails, which that's tomorrow's video. Uh, new, a whole new set of Rolly Tasker sails. Um, the new hydro vane, um, and the new rudder are the main things that I have to kind of suss out. So, <clears throat> um, what else? What else? I was hoping that this dude would turn the music down eventually, but seems like he's turned it up. So I apologize for this in advance. Um, and my welding bill just went through. So <clears throat> I'm glad that's over with. Okay. Um, um, oh, and then uh, Sarah, I see you responded to someone. You uh, include whatever you're responding to so that they know, <laughs> like whatever question they asked. Um, and thanks to Sarah and Colby for moderating the chat. I appreciate it. Sometimes people act a fool. Um, someone's asking about my sponsors. Yeah, I have a number of sponsors. Um, I'll talk about them at the end of the chat. Um, alrighty. Uh, yeah, so let's go downstairs and take a look. I'm, I gotta open the hatch and everything, so I'll be just a second. Okay, here. Oh, thank you, Arthur. That is awesome. Appreciate it. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? I hope I do not fall down the stairs. It is like kind of sketchy. I oh, will drop my new laptop. There's the repair. Let's see how she do. And these are the the all threads that I replaced. And then these are the patched spots. There's that new zinc. New bottom paint. Stoked. That's that. Um, uh, let me see what you guys are saying. Um, cool. 
Colby said, so much better than what we cleaned in LA. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it was crazy too. I, I dove on the boat right before I came over here and there was growth at the top, like six inches, but um, the rest of it was just moss. Like I could just wipe it off with my hands. So the bottom paint was still really good, but to add, go ahead and be able to add a second, another coat, you know, gets me that much further. I hope to not haul out again until Thailand. So um, that's a plan. Um, I'm so kind of burnt on boat work. I am ready to just be like done and like sailing. Uh, found out that um, the day I got the welding done, Metal texted me and was like, happy boat anniversary. And I hadn't even crossed my mind, but it was five years to the day that I bought Tritea that her rudder was repaired. So I, I really liked how that lined up. That was cool. Um, so, uh, what else? Let me see if there's some questions here. Someone said nice tunes. Yeah, not my tunes. Um, what else? Let's see. Would I ever be the captain of a fishing boat? No, it's not my jam. Um, fishing boats, that's like serious, hard, hardcore work, man. It's like, I'm not tough enough for that stuff. Um, what else? Um, someone asked if I stop in Indonesia. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I hope to spend like a year cruising around Southeast Asia. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that and it's really affordable. So like Hawaii has like been so gnarly cost wise. And it's funny because like when I got here, everything had happened. I set the wheels in motion to ship Tritea back and um, it was going to cost me $4,000. But one of the, uh, one of my viewers had a trailer for an Albert 30. He was going to let us use and everything. And um, you know, some trolls were like busting my balls about it and saying like, it would be more expensive to do that than to have it repaired here. And that's absolute bullshit. Like considering how much it's cost to do this and considering how much I had to pay for cost of living to be here for seven months. And that's what I said originally. I was like, I, I, you know, I can't afford to stay here. Now, the only reason it worked out is because the channel blew up. And so I was able to like the additional income from like the ad revenue from the videos is the only reason I was able to even stay in Hawaii. Cause it is so crazy expensive here and I've loved it here. I've had a fantastic time and, but I am super stoked and ready to move on for sure. Um, what else? Let me see what's happening over here. Uh, somebody talked about my bootstrap. Yeah, I need to, um, I need to actually move my bootstrap up now that she's loaded. That was one cool thing is, and if any of you guys have boats and you get hauled out, make sure you ask the travel lift person um, how much your boat weighs. And I had forgot to do that at Ventura Harbor Boatyard. And so this time I made sure the water tanks were full and like she was totally loaded down so I could get an, an, a realistic weight. And uh, he said she weighs 5,000 pounds. So now I know what she weighs. Um, boy, Kobe is on one. People are people are acting silly over here. My little brother Kobe's like, like a video game shooting down these comments. Um, so, uh, what else? What else? So what am I, where am I off to next? Um, so yeah, I'm, like I said a little bit earlier, I'm about to head to Maui and explore all those islands do some filming and then edit all those episodes so that they post while I'm at sea and I'll be sailing south to the Tuamotus to French Polynesia. Uh, I am stoked and also a little bummed because originally I want to go to Kiribati, but they were only open for five days and they repatriated uh, a, a whole plane full of Mormon missionaries that were citizens of Kiribati. They weren't even letting their citizens come back. So they finally repatriated a bunch of their citizens and they brought 30 COVID. So Kiribati was open five days and I don't expect them to be open for a year. Um, 
so that would have been nice to be able to do like a 10 day sale instead of having to do another long push. But the two Motus, it's an easy point of sale. It's just long. Um, and the Hokalea, and I can't recall the other Polynesian voyaging canoe that are sailing vessel that's that's in route right now. They're heading down there and they've been making great time. And I'll be sailing pretty much the same route as them. So I am. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm stoked. I'm stoked to get down there. I'm really excited to check out the two Motus. Like I've been reaching out to people who are down there, spend a lot of time asking like about their favorite uninhabited atolls and stuff. That's really where I want to kind of hang out at. Um, and I just sewed a new redesigned my cockpit shade to be a really uh, kind of cool rain catchment system. So I'll show that on video as it all goes down and stuff, but I'm pretty excited about having that because I'll be collecting rainwater when I'm in the two Motus and stuff. Um, what else? Uh, someone asked if I, before I push off, before pushing off, have I bought a rod on board to fish? I had a rod on board. I had tons of fishing gear when I sailed here. I've said it a hundred times. I just didn't want to waste all my gear because I was already in a desperate situation. So yes, I have plenty of stuff to fish with. Um, someone asked how long I've been in Hawaii so far. I've been here since, since September. So whatever that, however that math adds up. Um, uh, Clay asked, when is, when is hurricane where you are? The hurricane season here is around June, but, um, it's not a concern. I'll be leaving the end of May or the first week of June for the two Motus. Um, someone said, what is an average budget per month you would recommend to do what you're doing? That all depends on where you're doing it at. Um, in Hawaii, like, I don't know. I live very simply, far simple, more simple than most people do. So it's hard to gauge, but I would say between $1,500 and $2,000 if you're staying on your boat and eating on your boat most of the time and stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's pricey. Someone asked about e attach your life vest in case you fell overboard. You're not getting saved. You're going to die. That That's like, it's a false sense of security. You're there's, there's your toast. <laughs> Just the key is to don't fall overboard. If you're close to shore. Yeah. But if you're a thousand miles in the middle of the ocean, you're toasted. Um, uh, what else? Um, someone asked if I'm taking any crew, what if they pay their own way? Absolutely not. Nope. It'll be a solo passage for me. Um, I like solo ocean sailing because I'm totally comfortable being uncomfortable and uh, it would be much, my boat is very small and it would be much more uncomfortable to be on board with somebody who was miserable. <laughs> I, I'm fine being miserable. I'm like happy. No problem. <laughs> um, someone asked, am I looking at an outboard? No, I own a very nice outboard. Um, what else? Alex V said, asked if I'm coming to New Zealand. Yeah, the goal is to be in New Zealand by November. I'm, I'm trying to just like cruise through the South Pacific this season. And if they're open and I can get in, I'm, I'm going to try to get the like nine month visa in New Zealand. I want to ride out cyclone season in New Zealand and explore everything there. And then the plan would be next April, sail to Australia and then do the east coast of Australia all the way up. Um, and then make my way up into Indonesia. That's the, the loose plan right now. Um, what else? What else? Um, 
Do you find asked about vax status by various governments? Yes, absolutely. You have to be vaccinated almost everywhere you go. And I'm like all caught up. I'll get my second booster right before I go. I also have to get um, my measles shots because I don't have paperwork from when I was a kid showing I had my measles shots or having a really bad measles outbreak in um, uh, the Samoan islands. So American Samoa and Samoa, which Samoa is closed, but American Samoa, you have to have measles shots. So I'm getting that. I already ordered one. I have an appointment to get one here. So I'll get both of those shots and uh, be caught up with all my shots when I leave. Um, someone said, any other surprise in the boatyard? Zero. The only other surprise was that there's no shower in this boatyard. But this boatyard's cool for the fact that they let you stay aboard, which is like Ventura Harbor boatyard. But they are way more expensive. Like the haul out, just to haul the boat out was... Four hundred and eighty-one dollars, I think, and in Ventura it's two seventy-one, and the lay days for a thirty-foot boat are eighty-eight dollars a day, and the lay days in Ventura are fifty-one dollars a day, um, and they give you a free pressure wash when you haul out in Ventura. And here they want to charge you two hundred fifty dollars to pressure wash the bottom of your boat. That's why I cleaned it before I came over. Um, Hello, Metal. What up, girl? We we're just talking. Um, someone asked if I got any new tattoos while in Hawaii. I have not. I I want to get. There's a couple of little ones, but um, I just don't. I don't have any money, so money is really really tight right now with all of this business. So I might get a little one. I wanted to get a zebra dove tattoo from my buddy, um, Big Island Mike, but um. I like to, you know, pay people for their time. And um, and in the past, I've, I've bartered for a ton, but I just don't have time to barter for anything while I'm here. Someone, oh, Kobe said, how does the shower bathroom situation work out if they don't provide it? They have a bathroom that you have a key to. It's like a trailer, and it's fine, but there's no shower. So that first night, I was so gnarly. I took like a hobo shower in there. Um and then yesterday, my friend Josh let me borrow his like panel van. He has a shop right down the street. He let me borrow his panel, his work panel van, so I was able to run around and get some stuff. He also gave me a key to his marina's right next door, and he gave me a key to the shower, so I was able to pop over and get a shower yesterday, and it was heaven. Hello from Ventura. Um, what else? Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, Hindu Kush, appreciate it. Someone just asked, so I actually needed a rudder a thousand miles from Hawaii. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, what else? Someone said, what, what, what do I do to get over the nerve of ocean dangers? Um, I don't know. It's like, I'm not scared of the ocean at all. It's like the most peaceful place I've been, especially like being in the middle of the ocean where there's no, no one around, no land, nothing like that's the place I'm the most at peace. So I'm not afraid of the ocean. I give her as much respect as I possibly can. And, and I'm aware of the dangers, but um, I'm not afraid of the ocean, so. When is my book coming out? Uh, it's going to be a minute for the big book. Um, I did my logs book, which is out. Um, oh, that's something actually I can talk about. Um, my The big book about my passage, which has a lot of stuff in it about the ending of my marriage and a lot of personal stuff, pretty heavy stuff. I'll write more on it on this next passage, but um, it's going to be a minute before I finish that. It's like still processing a lot of stuff and yeah, it'll be a minute on that one. But I have a big feature coming out in Cruising World Magazine for the June issue, which should I think it'll be out this week. Um, Art uh, The uh, sailor and writer David Blake Fisher he pitched the story to them. I didn't even know him. 
he hadn't contacted me. He pitched a story and then he reached out to me when they accepted the story. And then we did an interview and, and he wrote this feature. So a three, I think it's a 3000 word feature coming out in the magazine. Biggest, biggest feature in the, in that issue. So that's cool. And then the other cool news is I have an article that I wrote for good old boat magazine coming out in their next issue, which I think is two months from now. And it's about finding Tritea and getting her going and my first adventures on her and then where I went from there. So I'm excited. That's like my first like paid sailing writing gig. I've been paid for writing in the past, but first like paid to write a story about sailing. And that's where I want to go. That's like my long game is is to be, you know, writing stuff, articles and 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 contributing to different publications and stuff. So that's exciting for me. I'm really happy about that. <clears throat> what else? Um, someone asked if I have any galvanic corrosion issues some up since upgrading the DC system. Not at all. I don't know how I would, but um, no, I have not. Um. Uh, what's my pro protocol for heavy weather reef early reef early. That's the key. And, uh, someone's asking if I have redundant systems for navigation, observation charts. Yeah. All you gotta do is watch my video about what I learned. And I talk about all of that stuff, all of it. It's, it's like a 40 minute video. I cover everything. Um, What else? How are the lithium batteries working out? Lithium is a dream. And the electric galley is super cool. I'm really stoked on the whole thing. Uh, really, really excited. <clears throat> the lithium is crazy. It's like, it tops up so fast. Even when it's pretty overcast, it, it tops up all the way. Uh, and my new electric galley, there'll be a short little video coming out talking about my power consumption stuff with like, I documented the first week. Well, the first like three days, pretty extensively, I documented every hour I was checking my, my battery, um, consumption usage and topping up. And, um, and then it became redundant because it's like, it tops up so quick that it was like, okay, well, it's kind of like wasting my time. But the, the lowest my batteries have gotten, like the first night I used like the range top, the convection oven, I like pushed it further than I would normally push it. And, um, I got my batteries down to like 76% capacity. And then the next day, and it was cool because the next day it was really rainy. So I was like, awesome. This is like a real world sort of, cause usually in Hawaii, it's just like blast and sunshine most of the time. So I was like, this is awesome. This is like, we'll see, you know, and by 4 30 PM, they were at hundred percent, even with it raining on and off the whole day and mostly cloudy. So that was pretty cool. Um, I did just get, I bought a little generator, uh, backup little generator, just in case I get in a situation. When I get to New Zealand, it might, I might run into that where it's like, you know, if there's two weeks of storms and my cooking is all electric, then obviously I'm going to need some kind of way to, to back up my solar. Um, and I'll get into like everything once I do that video. But yeah, so far it's been unbelievable. But, and also... And I'll, well, I'll talk about all that when I get to that video about my recommendations, because I don't know that I'm a solid example for everyone because I'm, I cook pretty minimally. So if there's like a bunch of, you know, if there's a family on a boat, obviously their power demands are very different than if it's like a solo sailor or shorthanded sailing. Uh, but so far it's like, yeah, it's been, it's been awesome. Um, what else? Shane O'Dell said, if I could do it again, what I've done differently before crossing the Pacific. The first time when I hauled this boat out originally, I have a video clip of it. I was nervous about that rudder. And the foreman of the yard convinced me it was fine. Because he was like, my concern, what I was concerned about wasn't the problem, actually. 
I was freaked out that it was wood. And I was like, and I was like, should I like, you know, change it now? And he was like, dude, there have been wooden boats selling for centuries. He was like, and he stabbed it with his knife in a bunch of spots. He's like, this thing is solid. It's not soft. There's no rot. And, and what's funny is like, you know, the wood didn't fail. This bronze failed, but it was from an impact. So there's, there's nothing that can be done about that. Right. It's like, I hit something underwater. So, um, but that's the only thing is I wish I could have replaced my rudder before crossing an ocean. So if I had it in the perfect scenario, if I could have had my rudder replaced, that's what I would have done beforehand. Just so, cause it, I was nervous about the rudder way back when. Um, Cornbread Cuban said, what solar brand did I purchase? Um, I'm sponsored by Renogy. So they sent me uh, two 200 watt Renogy panels, <clears throat> but I had actually bought Renogy before. So like when I did my initial setup, I paid full price, bought Renogy panels and I loved the way they performed. I thought they were outstanding. And then they reached out to me about a sponsorship. And so I was like, yeah, I do like your products tried and true. So I'm, I'm totally down. So yeah, I have 400 watts of solar aft uh, on the rails, and then I have a little 50 watt flexible panel. I don't remember who it's from. It's some, I don't know who makes it. Not Renogy. It's some weird little thing. But that is my trickle charger for my starter battery. What up, Carlos? Okay, I tell you guys something funny. Um, and anyone that just got here, uh, I'm on the hard. I'm on jack stands. There's a 12 foot ladder, but I thought, uh, Carlo, you see Carlos Archuleta in the, um, in the chat right now. Now he's one of my dearest and oldest friends and I have tormented him for many, many years. I like to scare, he scares easy. So anytime I'm near him, I try to scare the life out of him and I've messed with him for decades. And so <laughs> I thought of Carlos earlier because I climbed out and I thought for a second, oh, if Carlos was here, he would totally have just taken off with my ladder. And so that crossed my mind that he could have like really hosed me and I would have been trapped on the boat. Um, so I love you, Carlos, and I will never stop scaring you if I have the option. Um, what else? Someone said, what's the difference between the weight of lithium and what I was using before? The lithium batteries are like 60% lighter than lead acid. Someone said, New Zealand opened for international tourists last night, as long as you're vaccinated. Hopefully the maritime borders are open. I know they've been letting some people in, like the winds got in, if they promised to spend $20,000 on a um, refit. So hopefully that's the issue is a lot of places like Cook Island to international travel, but their maritime borders are still closed. Um, so yeah, my plan is to go to the two Motus and then to American Samoa, and then American Samoa to Fiji. I wanted to go to the Cook Islands, but I don't know that they'll be open by the time I get there. So I know I can get into American Samoa, and I know I can get into Fiji. So that's kind of the, that's the loose end right now. But I'm down to like, oh, it'll be Tuamotu Societies, American Samoa, Fiji. That's the plan right now. Um. Someone's asking about wire chafe on the back of the stove. No, like I said on the video, and you can see clearly, there's rubber hose over all the wires that are touching the metal edge. So, no, I'm not concerned. Um, someone asked, uh, could I explain a bit how you used your wind vane as an assist to your drogue steering? Yeah, so the, the wind vane helped quite a bit because you kind of fine tune the wind vane. And the wind vane was an auxiliary rudder wind vane. So I was able to still use it, but the wind vane, the rudder was so small, it wasn't nearly powerful enough to steer the boat with the sails up. Had I been motoring, I could have just used the wind vane. It could have easily steered the boat, but with the power of the sails, there was, it was, it overpowered the, you know, you think about how deep the rudder is on my boat versus like the wind, the old sail on that wind vane I was using. So Basically, I would tune my course with the wind vane, and then the the drogue was kind of brunt force, right? So the uh, 
the wind vane would help a lot when it would try to run off when a squall would hit the wind vane would kind of get her back on course so that was like a fine tuning of the course was being held by the wind vane and then the drug was like countering it to deal with the loads that the sail was putting on the wind vane so that's really how it worked and um i don't i couldn't have sailed as efficiently with just the drogue i do not believe in fact i know that's true because the wind vane kind of toasted out the last stretch and um i had to sit back there and hand steer for like eight hours um so yeah <clears throat> Um, Angel's asking, do I cook? What do I eat on the boat? Um, I am, I am pretty utilitarian as far as food goes. I'm trying to get better about it. Um, Patagonia Provisions just sent me a care package of a bunch of their stuff for the passage. So I'll be trying a bunch of their easy prepared stuff, which will be good for when the conditions are really messed up. But I like Japanese curry and rice. Um, I have some, well, I'll bring like vegetables and eat those like first and then otherwise canned vegetables, um, I'll be making like, you know, um, fried rice. Uh, what else do I make? Ramen is a good, good thing, especially with kimchi. Um, pasta is like an easy go to sandwich stuff, but bread goes bad pretty quick at sea. So I bring a lot of tortillas. Um, there were even points where I was making like putting peanut butter on tortillas and rolling them up because I was my bread was toasted, not toasted, but, you know, it, it was shot. someone asked which boat brands and boats would you recommend for longevity i have a video on my channel called what boat do i need to go sailing and i cover a lot of that stuff in that so check that out someone's asking if it's too much trouble to tell a story of episode 169 no clue what that episode is um What else? Ah, boy, Colby has been on it. Thank you, Colby, for monitoring whatever silliness. And luckily, I haven't seen it, so I haven't gotten upset. Um, someone asked earlier, like, what do I like or dislike about my my fame? Um. It's dealing with um, dealing with the trolls is uh, pretty exhausting, and it's kind of a full time job. There's a lot, a lot of it, and there's way more positive people and and nice people, but um, it is like there's a lot of hate out there, and uh, and it's like water on a duck's back for me. But sometimes it's just like so exhausting. It's just like really. Like, this is what you do with your life is like, you just like say terrible things on the internet it is, it is fascinating, but, um, it's part of, part of, part of the thing. So that's a bummer. Um, the thing I like is that, um, it's awesome that I'm able to like make videos and give them away for free. And I'm, I'm able to make a living on it. Uh, that is really neat. I've talked about this with some friends. It's like, what other kind of industry can you give things away for free and still be able to eke out a living so that's really really cool um and uh yeah and also like i don't know i get so many especially in the passage videos so many incredible messages where people talk about um how it's inspired them or they were having a bad day or they've been in a rough patch and like it really ignited them to like make their lives better or something like that that feels awesome that is great. I really like that. Um, what else? Mike Sesson, over the last seven months, what experience has impacted you the most in Hawaii? Um, this, these, and everyone told me this when I got here. These islands are magic. They are very magical. Um, it was kind of the perfect place for me to land with a severely broken heart. And um, yeah, that aloha is a real thing. Uh, but just like all the cruising I did here in Oahu, like 
all of the anchorages were totally unbelievable in their own right. Like Kaneohe was insane. So cool. Makua, just fantastic experience. Um, Pokai Bay, like everything, like Electric Beach. That's where I got to swim with sharks for the first time that I knew about. So, yeah, and I can't, I'm so, I'm so, so stoked that the rudder is fixed and I get to go to Lanai and Maui and Molokai and Molokini and uh, hit all those islands. Um, and then I think when I leave for good, for good, I think I'll hop back over to Maui and then I'll hop to the big island. I'd love to meet Paul Exner. He's over there and hit, there's only a, a handful of anchorages that are good over there. So I'll probably hit those anchorages. And then I'll, I'll depart for French Polynesia from the Big Island. Um, Kimberly said, have why? I think she missed the rest of that. I don't know. Um, what else? What's the best place to arrive there and provision here on Oahu? Uh, the Alawai. It's centrally located. There's tons of shops everywhere. You get, and actually, I'm doing a boater's guide. I don't, if you if you watch some of my other channel, my other videos, uh, I did a bunch of series in Southern California called a boater's guide, where I talked about what to expect at different places along the coast. So I'm doing one for the Alawai, and then a brief section about the different anchorages and stuff, but. I'm going to do one telling you the process of like when you arrive from the mainland, what to do at the Alawai, what you need to get a guest slip. You have a guest slip. You can, you have 120 days in a calendar year at the, at each state Harbor in Hawaii. Um, so the Alawai is a state Harbor and what to expect and everything like that. So that's a video that's going to be coming out. It'll, it might air while I'm at sea, but it, it'll, it's coming out before, before too long. Someone said, how is Kimberly doing? Kimberly is on the chat right now. <clears throat> um, there she is. Uh, have I found any pearls? Nah, girl. Um, Kimberly, I'm going to call Kimberly out right now. Kimberly has just recovered from malaria and tick bite fever. She was very, very, she's still sick, but she was very sick, like in the hospital. And... Uh, super super scary there's an amazing hospital like a free hospital clinic there in mozambique in zavra that they took care of her and um i'm gonna try to do a little fundraiser for them uh because yeah she was real and i i think she filmed some of the kimberly will you chime in on the chat and tell us did you film any of that stuff to talk about you being sick and what your experience was there um yeah, so very scary, but um, yeah, she's finishing up her time in Africa and has a bunch of cool jobs lined up this year in different places around the world. Um, Carlos is asking, any more onshore adventures, hiking or food? I'll probably do some hiking on Molokai um, and Maui, but I've explored Maui pretty extensively onshore, and I have not explored it at the sea, so... I'll probably stick to the um, the sea and save my land explorations for the South Pacific. Oh, Kimberly said she did film that. Um, very scary. She was very, very sick. Um, what else? Oh yeah, Sarah said Diamond Head. Yeah, we when Sarah was in town recently on a whim, we like left the mailbox and I just like was like, oh, let's just drive over to Diamond Head because I'd never been up in the crater. And that was like one of the coolest things I've done, actually. I loved if now they're changing it, so you have to have a reservation, which sucks. But um at least for Kama Aina they don't, but 
for tourists or people visiting, it's a bummer. You get the, the reservation system here is like so so rigged. It's a it sucks. But hiking up Diamond Head was super cool. Um, what else? You guess everybody chill. We're all right. We're 55 minutes in. Everybody's still all right. Will I do something on pirates? No, because pirates are generally a myth. Um, there are some bandits here and there, but unless you're a giant oil tanker trying to get to the Suez Canal, there's some there's some bandits around Malaysia and stuff. But if you don't sail at night solo, alone, then um, you're if you don't put yourself in harm's way, you're not going to have a problem. You just stay out of the zones where there's a lot of bandits. But as far as like proper pirates, unless you're a giant cargo ship or like, I would love to go up the Suez Canal and sell by Egypt, but it's too risky. That's the only zone where there's like known, legit, serious pirate concerns, but they don't want a yacht this size. They might like, you know, come on board and steal my electronics or something or like kill me just for joy. But that's the pirate thing is like mostly people scared of boogeymen. What else? Um, I don't know. You guys have any more questions? I better check my phone. Usually, my tall texts me a question, but uh, she's being quiet on here. Uh, what else? What else? I don't know. No questions? I'm trying to think of what else I could tell you guys about. Um, I guess one of the things I've been like studying up on the South Pacific. Um, this is like one of the big books I've been looking at. And um, it's uh, there's another one. Somebody had reached out to me that spent a lot of time there and told me to download the see now metal. She's probably going to bust me out right now. Um, oh, she said she's cooking, listening and watching. Um, one of the uh, crazy things about the two emotus that I'm having to get my head around is that in the atolls, if there's only like a couple uh, or one or, or more passes into the lagoon in the atoll, there's a thing that these, uh, this I think the website's SV Soggy Paws, they have this incredible resource of all this stuff for the South Pacific. And that the uh, group of these cruisers that spend a lot of time down there have made this sort of like program called the Guestimator, where you kind of guesstimate the right time to go through the pass because you have to go through a slack water which means between high tide and low tide, there's like an hour where it changes direction, if you're lucky. Now, if the winds are really blowing from one way, then that that whole scenario changes. And there's a variety of other things so that there's no easy way to just know when to go through the pass. And so basically they say you use this guesstimator program to kind of get an idea, like a window, and then you sail up to the pass and you eyeball it. Because sometimes the the uh, current in or out of the pass can be going 14 knots and it can just throw you into the reef. There's like, you know, really hard to navigate in that sort of conditions. So <clears throat> that's something I've been researching and studying up on, learning how to do that stuff. And I want to get my head around it before I'm away from everything. And um, been looking for like pearl buoys, which everybody keeps telling me I'll be able to find them all over the two emotus on beaches. But these like rigid buoys that to float the anchor chain when i'm anchoring around coral uh so yeah trying to trying to get everything sort of dialed in before i leave <clears throat> thank you shauna appreciate it uh i surf terribly i'm not patient enough i'm really good at skateboarding and i'm really good at snowboarding um i just don't like sitting in the water waiting my turn so I'm not, I'm not a big fan of surfing. Thank you, Angel. Uh, 
Noon Productions is asking if there were any other damage. Yeah, I mentioned earlier, I found like a, I don't know, six to eight inch long scratch on the bottom of the hole where whatever I hit, that we initial strike was on the port side on the bottom of the hole <clears throat> just before the rudder shoe. That was the initial strike, and then it hit the rudder, and which is the re I would guess is the reason it didn't just completely um, destroy the rudder in the first place. Um, what else? You guys got any more or should we tap it out? It says one hour. Let me see. How many people are on? 128? Let me see if there's anything, anything else I can show you. Don't know. Oh, Medtal is asking. Yeah, I already talked about what I'm doing in the in the coming future there, Metal. Heading to the South Pacific. Talk more about upcoming videos. Well, tomorrow's video, it was shot back in January. And it's uh, when Kimberly Wood was still here. And it, she helped me film and put on the new sail. So I got a new mainsail and a new headsail from Rolly Tasker. Um, they did a co-sponsorship. So they gave me a deal that made it possible for me to get all new sails for Triteo. Uh, I could not have afforded it without their help. So that's pretty awesome. So that's tomorrow's video. And then the following Monday's video is the passage here. And, the, and then we get right into the haul out. I think there'll be three videos for the haul out. There's like the day I, I came here, the initial sussing out how to repair it, <clears throat> a day of the welding and different stuff like that. And then the day of me splashing. But uh, I've only edited the uh, that one of the first day of the haul out so far. Um, and then after that, it'll be a bunch of videos from Maui. Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to be doing like a boater's guide for the Alawai and stuff like that. Um. Someone's asked, don't, don't in the chat without talking about my sponsors. Okay. My, I have a full sponsorship with Dakota lithium. Um, they supplied me with everything I needed to upgrade my setup. I made a video about it. Um, that's the whole reason I went electric. Like when I reached out to Dakota and filled out, they have a form on their website. So I went on there and filled it out. And, um, the idea was like, I was like, okay, well, if they say yes, then I'll go electric with my galley and then if i don't hear from them or they say no then i'll convert to propane because i had alcohol stove before so i knew i had to convert before i went to south pacific so um when they just agreed to sponsor me that's when i went ahead and did that massive project with all the lithium and all the dc charging system and stuff and then and then moved on to the electric galley uh Renogy is a sponsor um for solar and they also supplied me with the inverter for the galley 3000 watt inverter um i love energy panels they're awesome i had them before they've done me right rigid panels are the way to go they're much much more efficient than flexible panels if you can pull it off that's the one thing that i'll probably do in thailand is um might build a solar arch have a solar arch built in thailand and then get another 200 watts up there it would be nice to have like 800 watts of solar um, once I get into places that aren't the tropics. Uh, and then, um, like I said, Rolly Tasker is a co-sponsor. And then Patagonia Provisions isn't really, they're not really a regular sponsor. They just sent me a bunch of products. So, um, but they're real nice and they're excited. They would love the, the clip of the stove going crazy and me cooking at sea. So it'll be a good way for me to like show these high quality meals prepared, you know, that you can just add water to. It'll be good for good for passage making for sure. So that's that. And I, I have a lot of different companies have reached out to me, but I don't, I don't want to work with anyone. I don't believe in what they're doing. So I'm very particular about who I choose to work with. Um, there's a lot of like 
you know, companies I'm not interested in that offer me money to include them in videos that, you know, but I turn it down, even though obviously the money would help, but I'd rather not sort of like degrade my channel and uh, just figure out a way. Like for this haul out, um, I did before I left LA, <clears throat> I worked as a fabricator for my buddy Dane owns a fabrication company that has a contract with like old Navy and target and Levi's and we would build all their sets and their props and all that stuff. So that's what I was doing full time in LA before I left. Um, not full time, but freelance. I'd work a couple weeks a month. Um, they happen to be shooting out here a couple months ago, month and a half ago, I guess. And so I did a whole, an old Navy job here. And um, that's how I was able to get money to even pay for this haul out. Otherwise it would have totally, destroyed my cruising kitty and even as it is i put so much on credit that i'll have to pay off but but at least you know i didn't really have a choice i had to had to get the boat fixed so what else kimberly's asking any, any neat artsy plans for the next passage um yeah but i'll talk about that in the future what else What else? I, I got to put on my old man glasses. These are like Target specials, like $12. Um, someone said, I see you wearing Gil. Um, they flown your gear. No, no, Gil. I oh, mean, I I love Gil and Musto. My Fowleys that I've had, I've like, taken on every passage i've ever gone on um i bought those full price many years ago and they're just quality stuff so they last but no i don't i don't have any apparel sponsors uh, sponsors um what else oh asking about the climbing gear um I haven't tried it yet. I'm kind of, my buddy Cy, I think I'm going to, once I get out of here and back on the water, if I'm going to fall, if I'm going to fall, I want to fall in the water. Um, and uh, I, um, I haven't tried it yet. I want my buddy Cy to come over and show me because I'm just duplicated his system and I'm going to film him explaining the whole system. I'm excited to be able to go up the mass solo though. It's kind of a bummer because when I, did the whole custom mast. If I had known that I was going to be a solo sailor, I would have installed mast steps, but I didn't. So now I'm kind of a situation where I have to be able to get up there. The other thing I just bought today was half inch three strand line. I'm going to be installing ratlins on my lowers. So I'll be able to scurry up um, like a buccaneer and uh, look from the lower spreaders to look at coral and stuff. Snake Man said, asked if I could give his son Jacob a shout out. What up, Jacob? Nine years old. Boy, you got you got a whole bunch of good times ahead of you at nine. <clears throat> um, Gary asked, hey, yeah, I showed the rudder already. Um, you'll be able to watch it, walk uh, the walk around in the uh, replay of this. And then I also have a video coming out very soon of the whole setup. Um, and also, um, if you want to see the rudder, you go to my Instagram account. There's pictures of of the the weld and everything, so you can see it's crazy how how cool it is. Um, what else, Carlos? What is a squall exactly? Like a wind gust? No, Carlos. A squall is like a thunderstorm, like we got in New Mexico, but on the sea. And they usually pass very quickly. Um, they're usually like like that. <laughs> so it depends. Sometimes they can be nothing, but yeah, especially in the Atlantic where the water's warmer. Um, me and Kate Harding were talking about this earlier. Uh, yeah, so it's basically like a fast moving storm. And then in the Atlantic, you'll see these squall lines where if you get stuck in one, you just get hammered by squalls over and over again. They're just like a conveyor belt of weather.
Um, Spindle Springs Ranch said, when you're on an ocean passage, what type of things might you do that make time pass quickly as I imagine the days seem long? Um, even like my last passage, I never was like chomping at the bit, except for the last 24 hours. That's the hardest. <laughs> it's almost like, I think I heard it from the wire, right? It's like, they say it's like being in prison. You only serve the first day and the last day. It's kind of like that. The first day is really hard of an ocean passage and the last day is really hard of an ocean passage if you're lucky. But um, I mean, I always just, I read and I write and I edit video and I just enjoy the experience of being at sea. But um, I think it's good to just kind of get Zen with it and just try to like enjoy the whole experience, the stillness, the slowing down, the forced slowing down it's so hard for us to do that nowadays that i think that is a very important thing to not try to do things to like distract yourself someone asked what's the furthest north i've ever cons i've ever sailed considering sailing to canada during depending on the season i've sailed in the Oland islands of finland so i've sailed very not on tritea but I've sailed in the Orkney Isles, so above 59 degrees, I've sailed pretty high. Um, yeah, I would sail to Canada, but not it's not in my route at the moment. I had planned on going from here. Originally, I was planning this down here to the Aleutians, and then down Alaska, down to Canada, but um, things changed. What else? Uh, noon production asked, did I edit during my crossing? Yeah, that whole, the whole passage video was all done except the last day when I touched land, it was totally edited. So I would edit, <clears throat> I would shoot for like three or four days and then drag all the footage. I had a bunch of SD cards and I would just switch them out. So I didn't chance losing it, but I lost the camera overboard. And then I would, um, I, uh, switch them out. Let me see how my battery is doing here. Um, I would switch them out, transfer the footage, and then edit each day in its own sort of sequence, and then drag them together in the timeline to see what made sense. Because it was really hard to edit 32 days into 60 minutes. Um, someone said, what does my boat's name mean? Tritea was the uh, daughter of Triton and the granddaughter of Poseidon. And she was loved by the war god Ares, um, which is not the the uh, constellation Ares. It's a different 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 person. But um, yeah. What else? Someone said, "What edit software?" I was using. I just had to buy a new laptop because my old laptop died. But um. I was using Premiere, but I hate that Premiere is a like a like you have to pay for it, like subscription based now, which I I think that's total bullshit. So editing on Final Cut, I learned how to edit on Final Cut years ago, and I edited professionally on Final Cut, and then I ported when they they kind of hosed Final Cut with Final Cut X. I I ported everything to Adobe, and then now that I had to buy a new laptop, um. I went ahead and went to Final Cut because I could. I bought it for like 300 bucks, so it's done. One price, done, no problems. And I'm loving, loving it. I'm using Final Cut, and I'm using Affinity Photo for like basic photo, for instead of Photoshop. And they're both incredible. I'm loving them. Um, wow, flying over here. Let me see. Um, someone asked where, where do I see myself in 2023? Um, I'll be, hopefully I'll be in New Zealand at the beginning until April of 2023. And, um, then I'll be in Australia and up into Indonesia. Um, I have to figure out the timing with like monsoon season and everything up there. I'm not educated very much on Southeast Asia yet, but, um, yeah, I'll plan on being in New Zealand and Australia for 2023. Um, 
Vertical Lines asked, since I'm isolated a lot, you get depressed at times. How do you fight it once you feel it? Um, uh, I haven't, I haven't gotten too dark. I mean, I'm still like kind of processing it, my whole life falling apart, like in relation to also my life being really incredible. So it's a very funny, strange thing to sort of like, like my life is the best it's ever been, but, but then it's also so entirely different than what I thought it was going to be. So I'm still sort of like processing that heartache. Um, but yeah, my life is, it's everything I dreamt that I wanted and I worked towards for so long that um, it's easy to not get too dark. You know, I definitely I'll wake up some mornings where I had like nightmares all night about my past. And so those are a little hard, but generally it's like, I'm in a beautiful place. I'm doing everything I dreamt was, I didn't think was possible. And um, I'm getting to share it with the world. So yeah, for the most part, um, I stay busy, you know, they always say the devil makes use of idle hands. And, um, for me, if I don't stay busy, then that's when I get dark and I am always busy. It is like, there's like not enough hours in a day for all the stuff I have to do. So. What else? saying sailing totem will be here in hawaii i'm i'll be gone i'm leaving hawaii at the end of this month this is may 1st so into this month i had to uh to french polynesia someone asked what do you have to fight a lithium fire life po four batteries are not the same they're it's not a concern they don't they're 100 percent safe Uh, I do not have a split backstay. I have a single backstay. Would there be a sailor that can't swim? Yeah, his name was Joshua Slocum. Quite a few, especially like in the early days in the like age of sail. Most of the sailors on the East Coast and in cold, cold latitudes, they didn't know how to sail. So Joshua Slocum is famous for not knowing how to sail. I mean, not knowing how to swim, rather. Um, yeah. What else? Someone asked, do I fish to eat? Um, no, I have plenty of fishing gear if I need to, and I will be fishing on this ne next passage. But um, I don't um, I don't take things I don't need, and, and if I have food, then I'm fine. That's the one thing, talking about fishing to eat, I will for sure be doing... Uh, <laughs> Kill Dragger mentioned Natalie Wood. Um, the uh, That's one thing I've had to study up a lot, and I'm nervous about. I've I would prefer to get fish through spear fishing because you can choose what you're taking. Uh, I like that idea a lot, but um, the there's so much cigaterra in the South Pacific that it's a real concern. So I'll definitely have to like ask locals about what they think is safe. My buddy Brian has told me a lot. Like he was saying, the main thing is like you don't eat barracuda because the barracuda eat a lot of reef fish, so they have high levels of cigaterra where smaller reef fish, it's an accumulation in your system. So even if you're getting small amounts from reef fish, um, it's safer, you know, the smaller the fish, obviously it's, it's less of a concern, but once you get cigaterra poisoning, it's in your body for the rest of your life. So it's a real concern. Someone asked, oh, wait, let me see. Uh, yeah, Mike Turner asked about if I'd have been cool to eat that tuna. You know, it's funny is like, where's my book at here? Um, so <laughs> it's so funny when that tuna got off the line, I actually, I'm kind of stoked that he got off line because I didn't know what I was doing. And, um, this book like cruising for fish. I think I show this every live stream, but this book is really cool. <laughs> I was like reading this book for hours after I didn't get that, that fish got off the line. And I was like, holy shit, I'm so glad I didn't catch that fish. Cause like, I don't know how to clean it. I don't know any of that stuff. And I actually reached out to like a small YouTube channel here and asked him, I was like, Hey, do you want to do a collab and like take me out fishing? And then we can do a joint episode and stuff. And then he like, I never heard back from him. So 
Um, and then my buddy Brian and those dudes took me out spearfishing, but we didn't land anything. I think they caught some small stuff that my friend was taking, uh, George was taking to his family uh, for that was back at Thanksgiving. So, yeah, I was hoping to like touch base with someone that could show me firsthand at least how to clean it and stuff. But I have this book um, and uh, I'll, I will for sure be trying to catch stuff on, on route. What else? What else? Have I been to Costa Rica? I have not. I would love to go to Costa Rica, but I have not been there yet. Someone asked if I ever get motion sickness. Yes, I for sure. I do get seasick. I did not get sick on my last passage, but the delivery I did recently, I got seasick on that from Kauai because that boat was so small and there was no wind and we were just bobbing around all night and I threw up twice. That's the first time I've thrown up on a boat in a long time. Um, but yeah, I get seasick, but pretty rare. Um, Ed C is asking, uh, besides the rudder, any major projects before I set sail at the end of the month? Yeah, I just need to finish installing my hydro vane, wind vane. And um, that's the main thing. Um, yeah. Mattel asked if I have any snacks. I have Cheez Its. That's like the only snacks I think I have on board that are easy. Um, what else? Someone's asking if I see UFOs or anything weird. No, I grew up in New Mexico. I saw weird stuff in New Mexico growing up, but I don't. I haven't seen anything besides an absurd number of satellites. Lots of satellites that you see at sea. And gorgeous stars. Someone said, how do you find and purchase tools in Hawaii at the hardware store? I, I don't know. There's like tons of stores here. Or Amazon. Um... What books do I read? Oh my God, I read so many books. I actually have, um, Sarah, will you post a link to that books I suggest from my Amazon thing? Um, I have a whole list. Uh, currently, I'm rereading Two on a Big Ocean. Just I've been rereading their passage of them arriving the two Motus to try to learn some things. And um, I've been jumping into little sections trying to read segments of South Pacific stuff. So I can try to like learn from them. Someone says, do I recommend hydro veins? I mean, in my opinion, hydro veins is the best wind vane that exists on the planet because it's an auxiliary rudder system. It's completely self-contained and it's like, you know, it's still, you still couldn't use it with no rudder. Just like you would still need to use a drogue just like I did because there's no wind vane unless you had a giant, really deep rudder. I don't believe that any wind vane exists that is a true emergency rudder system, uh, system that would allow you to carry full sail. I do not believe that exists from my experience of being in the sea. How do I like living on a boat 24 seven? It's my clubhouse. It's the greatest thing ever. I love it so much. How hard is sailing on my back? Um, it's not hard on my back, but my shoulder. I like really blew out my shoulder. Um, oh, well, that's one other project. Somebody asked about project. My buddy Cy sold me these like old self-tailing winches for like dirt cheap. And I'm going to be installing those on the mast. And that's going to help me a ton because like it's really hard on my shoulder. Uh, like reefing and unreefing the main over and over again. That's like, and that's the only, that's the only thing that really concerned me. Cause I like really kind of blew out my shoulder a long time ago and it's, it's easily re-injured. But in the back,